everyone. This is the second half of the No Calculator Quiz Review from Chapter 7 for Algebra 1. Sorry, I'm trying to shift down to the top there so you can see what I'm doing. Um, so try to ignore this side. Um, I released a previous video that covered this side. Now I'm going to be focusing on the right side of this page. Okay. Okay. So in number 10, I want to separate the numbers from the letters. Okay. I'm going to, this is a multiplication problem, so I am actually multiplying negative 6 times 7. I get negative 42. And then when I'm multiplying with exponents, I'm going to add those together. Because if you think about this, this is like 5x's all multiplied together and 3x's all multiplied together. So grand total, I would have 8x's all multiplied together. Be careful that you don't fall into this trap. Um, negative 42 um, that's a negative number, not a negative exponent, so nothing needs to switch positions here. That doesn't go on the bottom or anything. It's just a negative 42. Okay? And that's final answer. Number 11. I am very glad I looked at number 11 before I started this video because I probably would have been thrown off by it. Um, normally when we have these fraction exponents, that's when we break it up and we do like to the power of one-third and then to the power of six. Well, 2 is not going to break up to the power of 1 third, okay? But if you look at this one, 6 over 3 is really just equal to 2. This question is really just saying 2 to the second power, right? I think this was unnecessarily tricky. 2 to the second power is equal to 4. Final answer. But this would not have worked to break up that fraction, at least not if you were doing it without a calculator, okay? Okay. In number 12, this is a good one, make sure when you're doing these powers on the outsides that you're applying them to every single piece inside the parentheses. There are three pieces here, okay? There's a 6, there's an x squared, and there's a y. And all of those need to be raised to the power of 3. Okay, um, I want to show you a trick with this one, and this may or may not always work, but... 6 to the third power, that might be a little bit tough, okay? And we, I'll show you how to do 6 to the third power if you need to do it by hand. But watch what I'm going to do. I'm going to just rewrite this as 6 to the third. And then when I apply the 3 here, that's x to the sixth. And then I'm going to have it on top of y to the third. So I did a power of 3 on everything. I just didn't evaluate that. I just left it as 6 to the third for right now, okay? And I did that because I can see what's about to happen over here. But um, I'm just trying to save you some mental anguish here. Now, on this one, I'm doing the exact same thing. I'm doing a power of 3 on everything. I'm also flipping everything over. So that negative 3 is telling me to flip the whole fraction. So I'm going to end up with a z to the third up on the top. And down on the bottom, I'll have... 6 to the third, and y to the sixth, okay? All right, now I'm going to cram everything together left to right. So on the top now, I have 6 to the third, x to the sixth, z to the third. On the bottom, and I'm just going to put the number part first, I have 6 to the third, down here, I can actually combine those because they're both y's. Up here, I had an x and a z, so I couldn't. Um, this would become y to the ninth. And what I wanted you to see here is that without even knowing what 6 to the third is equal to, I ended up with the exact same thing on the top and the bottom. So this whole thing really cancels out. And so your final answer really just ends up being x to the sixth, z to the third, over y to the ninth. Okay? Um, so that does work sometimes. Now, if I, if that didn't cancel out completely, I may have ended up having to do this math anyway, but you can always leave it until you get to the end. Um, sometimes that's a little easier. Okay. Okay. On number 13, I'm going to dive in and just start applying my rules and not worrying about what's negative and what's not until I get to the very end. So here... I know to multiply. I know I'm going to have p to the negative 6. And here, I know I need to do 3 to the third, which is 27. And then here, I'm going to multiply, so that would be p to the 15th. OK? 
Okay. Now with multiplication here, I'm going to add my exponents together for this one and this one. And really, I have a 1 here, so I'm doing 1 times 27. So that 27 is just staying in my part of my answer. 15 plus negative 6 is just positive 9. So that's why I say not to worry about the negatives, because in this one, it didn't even end up being negative at the end. It ended up being positive. So I didn't end up having to move anything at all. Okay. Okay. On number 14, I am going to dissect this exponent, all right, and I'm going to apply it to both the 64 and the 9. So I'm going to say 64 to the 1 half to the 3rd to the negative 1 over 9 to the 1 half to the 3rd to the negative 1. So I took that exponent, I split it up, and I put it on both the 64 and the 9. Now, to be entirely honest, I did this problem a second ago, 64 to the 3 halves power. Okay, I did this exact same thing. Um, so 64 to the 1 half is 8. So now I have 8 to the 3rd to the negative 1. And then 8 to the 3rd I figured out was 512, so now I have 512 to the negative 1. Now, I'm going to leave that right there for just a second, okay? Because I don't want to start messing around with putting a fraction inside of something that's already a bigger fraction. So just leave that for a minute. Let's work through the bottom. 9 to the 1 half is 3, so then I have 3 to the 3rd to the negative 1. 3 to the 3rd I know is 27. So this is 27 to the negative 1. Okay, right here, the fact that both of these things are negative are telling me that they're both unhappy. Okay, so instead of making this a 1 over 27, and instead of making this a 1 over 512, they already live inside of a fraction. So I'm just going to switch their positions inside this fraction, and it would become... 27 over 512. And that's your final answer for number 14. Okay, So the negative is really telling me that just these two things are going to end up switching positions. All right. In fact, if I had wanted to, I could have switched them to begin with and then not worried about the negative one. Okay. Okay, I'm getting a little cramped for space here, but on 15, I want to make sure that I'm doing 125 to the 2 thirds and also that I'm combining my exponents here. But let's start with just the 125 to the 2 thirds. We know that's really 125 to the 1 third and then to the power of 2. 125 to the 1 third is 5. 5 squared is 25. Okay, so I know I'm going to have a 25 in my final answer. Okay, here 3 over 6 and 2 over 3, I'm going to multiply those things. Okay, and I guess I'm squeezing this over here in the exponent. Okay, um, so off to the side here, I hate to make this such a mess, but we'll put this over here. I'm doing 3 over 6 times 2 over 3 which is not as scary as it sounds, that's really going to be 6 over 18. And then I want to reduce that. 6 over 18 reduces to 1 third. Okay. So on this 25, I'm also going to have a V to the 1 third. And there's my final answer. So with the 125, I needed to make sure to apply the 2 thirds, and you have to work through that one like we've done all the other ones. With this one, I wanted to multiply, and that's what I came over here and did. I got 6 over 18, and then I reduced that by dividing by 6, reduced it to 1 third. Okay? Oh, it's getting to be messy. All right, a couple more. We can get these in here. 16, basic division problem. Division means I'm subtracting. So what I'm really trying to do here is negative 5 over 2 minus 3 over 4. Okay? Well, I'm going to need a common denominator here. 
So I'm going to rewrite this one as something out of 4, and I doubled that, so this is going to be negative 10 over 4 minus 3 fourths, which gives me negative 13 over 4. So really I could say my answer is b to the power of negative 13 over 4. And then because that's negative, now pay attention here, I'm not flipping this fraction. Okay, I'm not flipping the exponent. We've never, ever, ever turned an exponent over like that. What I'm flipping is this entire thing. And so I'm going to make it 1 over b to the 13 fourths power. That was a hard one to say. Okay. There's final answer on that one. And last but not least, number 17 here. Did I even leave myself enough space to do this one? Let's see. Give myself some walls here. Okay. A um, couple different ways I could go here. I can combine these R's on the inside and then raise to the power of 6 if I want to. Or I could raise to the power of 6 first and then combine. It really doesn't matter which way you go. Um, but because I believe in always starting inside the parentheses, because this is multiplication, I'm going to start by adding 4 thirds times 1 half. But I need common denominators, so I'm going to write them both as something over 6. Um, I have to double the 3 to get a 6, so this is going to become an 8 over 6. And I have to triple the 2, so that's going to become 1 times 3, which is 3, and I get 11 over 6. Okay, so now what I really have is r to the 11 over 6 inside the parentheses to the power of 6 out here. My rule now is multiplication, okay? So I'm doing 11 over 6 times 6. I hope that you are good enough with fractions that when you see this, 11 over 6 times 6, you know that the denominator is going to cancel out here and you're left with just r to the 11, okay? If that was a little bit beyond you, fraction-wise, the actual way that you would do 11 over 6, here, I'll just do this from here, 11 over 6 times 6 would be to say, all right, that's like 6 over 1, okay? Multiply straight across, so I get 66 over 6, and 66 over 6 also reduces to 11. So if you didn't catch that those two things just cancel each other out and you did it the long way, you should still end up at an 11. Okay. Okay, hopefully some of that made sense. I know right here towards the end, um, things got a little bit messy, but hopefully you followed okay. Um, I will do one more video with the problems from the back.